Our next presenter this evening is Emily. There we go. Hey, Blue. Emily is one of the co-founders of New Urban Farmers, a nonprofit focused on agriculture with a home in Pawtucket. Emily came to Rhode Island in 2003 for college at Johnson & Wales University and is now a permanent resident of the Ocean State. So let's welcome Emily to Rhode Island. I'm sure you can. Number two. Number two. Number two, Don. You got it? Hello, hello. Testing, testing, testing. We apologize about this. Sorry for the technical difficulties. This doesn't always happen. Oh, well, here we go. All right. Now we're back. Do you want to stand or not? All right. Let's start that over. Hello. <laughs> Try number two. Okay, I brought the technology. Here is Uti. Uti is the new face of agriculture, urban agriculture. He has been a new urban farmer since he was two years old. He's five years old now and he's going into his third season as a farmer. He's a huge inspiration of what agriculture can be and will be for the future. Inspiration like this. This is Will Allen. This is Blue shaking Will Allen's hand from Milwaukee. He runs a group called Growing Power. And we kind of consider him the father of urban ag and uh, aquaponics. So it's groups like ours that are really paving the way for urban agriculture here in the city. Here's an image of Gallego Court, the Garden of Life. This is 2000, no, this is fall 2009 before we got on and this used to be a park that was closed down over 20 years ago and it closed down because of the crack epidemic in the 80s. So this once sad place is now a warm, inviting, growing space that is an urban farm. In fact, here's a hundred people that helped us make it happen. This is 2010 and this is Pawtucket Proud Day. We had the community really come together and build beds build compost, build worm composters. I mean, these are community members that are really coming together and doing things that they normally hadn't done. And here it is a year later. You can see in the background of this picture, uh, the domes are going up, our geodesic domes. You can see two have covers and the third one hasn't come yet. But if you look in the foreground here, you can see a fence that we repurposed. A uh, broken fence we picked up and we're using it as a horizontal uh, trellis. And here we go with some uh, residents. This is Cheryl and Raphael. Cheryl has an arm full of zucchini. And uh, Raphael has probably the biggest cucumber that was ever grown in the garden. <laughs> and uh, these guys have really been committed. <laughs> and here we have, oops, I'm killing the uh, power again. <laughs> and here we have one of our youngest uh, community gardeners. And, here he came up every day in the summer for one of those tomatoes and he'd go for the biggest one and he'd eat it and sometimes he'd get down to three before he was full so <laughs> it's pretty good we're getting kids eating healthy food uh, and here you can see all the sunflowers and not only are they beautiful and make the garden life look wonderful and we plant them every year they're also helping us they're helping pull out the toxins remediate the soil and help us heal the earth so not only beautiful these guys are working hard um, here we have Blue teaching a group of kids how to, how to plant flowers. He's explaining how you open up the roots, you dig a hole, and you cover it up. These are things that these kids have never done before. You're actually seeing these kids planting the very first flower they've ever planted in their life. So, making their community beautiful at the same time. 
Here we have a group of siblings. There's Uti again working, Pitu and Lala. They are mixing uh, perlite, pro mix, and compost together in flats that we grow baby and microgreens in all winter long. So you'd be surprised, but this picture was actually taken right in the middle of the winter, and they're down in their t-shirts. So. And here's Coco. Coco has a huge smile, because in that container there, he has a grasshopper. <laughs> Yep, he got a grasshopper in his backyard that is the urban farm. It is the backyard for Coco and over 300 kids at Galago Court. So these kids have a huge opportunity right in their backyard. And here we have a group of teenagers that were doing a summer work youth program. And uh, you can see that they're painting up tables and benches. These are tables and benches that they built. They learned how to use tools, measured, use some math and good old cooperation. They had to learn how to work together to make it happen. So. so now that you've seen what we've been doing with community members and what the renewal of agriculture can do to people, we can kind of take a look at what we're going to be doing with the land. Here we have our geodesic dome. This is the largest one at the, uh, the Garden of Life, and it houses our aquaponics program. So uh, Inside, we have two different systems and they house these tilapia. These are the fish that we grow in our aquaponics program. You can see that uh, we have some orange ones, some white ones, and some blue ones all living together in the same system. And these guys are the powerhouse for the whole system, and you'd actually be surprised it's their poop that's the most valuable part. So. <laughs> you can see the greens are growing out of our pea gravel media system. Uh, underneath is a 1,200-gallon fish tank that hosts uh, the tilapia, and this this system was designed and built by RISD students during an alternative spring break, so instead of Cancun, they, they stayed with us. <laughs> and here, this is our raft system. Uh, you can see that the lettuce are floating on uh, foam, and then their roots are suspended in uh, nutrient-filled water. So what happens with that fish poop I mentioned the ammonias are turned to nitrates, and the nitrates are the fertilizers, so that gives it that nice lush green look. We can't forget the fungus either. So here is a crate of shiitake mushrooms. Us new urban farmers have been learning how to grow shiitakes, oysters, and other mushrooms, and we really believe that this is a true solution for a crop in an urban setting. I mean, you can grow mushrooms anywhere, in, in all places. So here you see a cart full of food. This is at the Fertile Underground in Westminster Street in Providence. You can see that we have greens and mushrooms delivered, and you can get our food at places like this, and also the best farmer's market in the state, Woo! the Pawtucket Winners Farmer's Market, the Hope Out Cheese. So this boils down to two reasons why we're doing urban ag and why we're renewing it. And the main reason is food, good, healthy, local food grown at home. We're bringing the farmer back home. So that is the real reason why we're renewing farming is because people need food. <laughs> and then the second reason is the kids. We're doing it for these guys. <laughs> these kids are faced with things unlike before. Monster foods, obesity, diabetes. They need healthy, safe, clean food more than any other generation. They're pressured with rising populations so we believe that it's a community that grows together, grows together. Oh